In our previous Into the Flames video, we had this happen. Oh, we're being burned. No, oh no, what happened? It just flashed on us. Man, it just flashed on us and we didn't have RIT. It was okay, right? Like everything was good. Now the cool thing is we had people leave comments uh, speculating on what Spur did to cause this flashover, right? Uh, it's some really pretty good in-depth uh, stuff, I think, relating to like the real-life mechanics of it and that sort of thing. I will say right now, I'm not 100% uh, certain on uh, the Flash mechanics in-game. And I'll definitely say I don't even want to really know the exact cause of a Flashover in-game. Uh, I have ideas, but I, I don't think I really want to know exactly what causes it 100% because I like the randomness and the unknown, right? Uh, it, it really kind of throws you a curveball. Fire Dynamics is incredibly, incredibly complex. Uh, there are so many variables that go into real life fire dynamics from fuel to oxygen to uh, heat dynamics, you know, rising heat. Is it uh, trapped in building? Uh, is it... Uh, able to escape um is it rising and getting trapped in pockets and then like in the ceiling and then working its way down to the floor the same thing with smoke uh is oxygen free flowing uh is it choked off is the fire burning clean is it burning dirty is there unburned uh, fuel in the smoke you know carbon heavy carbon that kind of stuff um there's so many variables that go into like real world fire dynamics i really i don't know anything about it i don't know anything about programming but i really kind of look at like that kind of involved in-depth simulation as something that's like mit level simulations right like it's so incredibly uh complex and involved uh and then on top of that you throw in uh the ever-changing environment right like the variable of the environment well uh, every fire is different. Every environment is different. Every building is different. What one fire does in one building may be something completely different in another. So you add in the complexity of how it reacts to the environment. You know, it had to be dynamic in how it reacts to the environment. Uh, so it's really, really super complex. I can tell you guys now, even though I don't know much about it, I don't know anything about programming, I can tell you right now, all the firefighting uh, games that I play, the fire dynamics are nowhere near that complex. They're pretty, uh, they're pretty simple, right? Um, I would think in game for the flashover, the trigger could probably be something pretty simple. I, I don't know. I've kind of wondered if it's as simple as like a true false to an open exterior uh, window or door. Uh, like I said, I don't know for sure. I don't really even want to know for sure, but uh, I kind of wonder, so like uh, if a uh, window is open, true or false, if true, then it increases the chance of your flash, right? Uh, I think it could be as simple as that. Um, case in point, we had another fire that I rolled up on in game uh, with Into the Flames. Uh, it was a single story house. Uh, it was abandoned, uh, supposedly it was abandoned. It had, uh, it, it had an attic with a living space in it. So uh, we roll up, the uh, attic and living spaces upstairs are fully involved. Uh, we do our 360. I can't remember exactly why, but I decided to knock a window out on the, uh, let's see, ABC, the D side and go through a window to start my search. Cause I, I think maybe I kind of thought there might be some fire on the first floor over there too, but I wasn't really certain on that. So we enter the house. Uh, we search downstairs. There's no fire on the first floor where I thought it might be. Uh, we circle around uh, the front part of the house and uh, over to like the B, uh, B and C side, that back corner over there in our search. Uh, and I want to say like it's a completely open floor plan downstairs. There's no doors whatsoever. Uh, no doors or anything like that. So we go back around to the B, C corner. It's clear over there. I start working my way back towards the front. We know like when I went by the stairway, to the attic and the upstairs living space. You can see fire at the top of the stairs. So it was fully involved upstairs. So we're working our way back around. I, I, I don't know. I can't remember what my intentions were. Maybe I was planning on just going out the front door at that point or going back to the window. But we're working our way back around and the, and the downstairs flashed on me. Uh, I was standing by an exterior window. I hit it with a Halligan 
uh, tried to go through the window and died half in and half out of the window. So uh, what were the variables for that flash? Uh, basically, the only thing that was different uh, after we arrived was that we knocked that one window out. So that's what leads me to believe that maybe it's tied to whether or not there's just a true false on an opening to the outside, uh, like an open door or an open window. I, I, I really, I, like I said, I don't know. I'm just purely speculating here. I, I don't think uh, open doors, like I don't think it takes interior doors into consideration. Um, but yeah, I, it could be as simple as something like that. It, you know, I, honestly, like open exterior doors and windows may not have any effect. It could just be a random chance to pop like a flash. It could be something as simple as that. You know, I, I, I think like the main thing I want to stress, I know a lot of real life firefighters watch uh, some play. I think some don't. Uh, you know, I just don't want anyone to get the impression that it's like a one to one representation of real life fire dynamics because it's not. Uh, it's really crazy, um, crazy complex. Uh, in real life versus uh, in the game. And like I said, I, I like the variable of not knowing. I know like in real life firefighting, you guys do everything in your power to prevent that stuff to happen, right? You've got a lot more skin in the game than I do. You're playing a literal game. You're playing the game of life. I'm playing a game game. You got a lot more skin involved. So you want to do everything you can in your power to prevent a flash, prevent a backdraft, whatever. Um... I think in firefighting simulation, as far as games, if the gameplay is as simple as just simply staying out of the red and wearing your mask and you're golden every time, um, it would get a little boring, right? Like I've died more in Into the Flames than any other firefighting game I've ever played because it does have uh, the variable of the flash happening uh it does have the variable of an explosion i mean i walked up to a propane tank i thought i had it cooled down and good to turn the valve off and it blew up in my face and killed me right so i love uh i love the unknown and the variables it's what makes it interesting to me and luckily you know if it, it is a game like if you die you just get to start over it's not a big deal uh the big thing the big takeaway from like into the flames is it's uh and i preach this all the time and i don't follow what i preach right like i never, <laughs> i don't always do it and i should have writ on scene you know if you have writ on scene dying's not a big deal they'll come in they'll get you you'll start over uh on site um but yeah i yeah, there's so many variables and things like that a uh, real life versus uh in game and i know I, I got to talk to uh you know the dev a good bit when he's doing the pumping update i remember me telling me the first thing you know when i it, he was explaining to me he's like this isn't a one-to-one -one recreation of pumping it's not meant to be a one-to-one -one recreation of pumping uh for a multitude of reasons but like the two to me were well the time investment it takes to uh do a one-to-one -one recreation and then even more so than that is like you don't want it to be so involved that uh, it discourages Joe Schmo off the street that doesn't know anything about it, like Spur, right? Uh, you still want those people to be able to play the game and enjoy it because that's the bulk of your uh, of your users, right? Or people that don't know anything about it. So uh, either way, it's like a really fascinating discussion, right? It was really cool reading those comments and seeing like how I, I'm assuming like that's how it would go down in real life. So, um, you know, honestly, in yesterday's flash, I was like, well, you know, we went in that bedroom. We knew it was on like the, uh, D side of the house for sure. It extended to the front door. You know, we went to the front door. We opened the front door, right? We saw a fire inside. Uh, I left the front door open and then we go around to the B side. We knock the window out. We jump through the window. We look. It's a bedroom. It's clear. Uh, it wasn't even really that heavy of smoke conditions in there. We, uh, we see the closed door, right? I see the closed door. So, of course, we peek the door, right? And we see that it opens into uh, like a dining kitchen area, uh, open living room, like a big living area. Uh, and the fire is definitely in that side. So we close the door back. And honestly, at that point, I felt like 
I was good by closing the door back, right? Like closing the door. Uh, of course, we start heading for the window to get out because we were done with our search. And of course, it flashed and, you know, our character wound up dying. So either way, really cool uh, sequence of events. I love it. I, I really, I love that. I love that. I don't get torqued at dying at all. I, I think it's funny, enjoyable. It throws you a curveball every time. It was definitely... Uh, really interesting to uh, to read those comments and kind of see how that could have possibly uh, gone down. So now that we've analyzed Spurs' uh, downfall that we all witnessed, uh, we've got another fire going. It's going to be another residential fire. I'm topping this engine off real quick because it wasn't uh, it wasn't full. Uh, I want to do another house fire right? because I feel like there's a good chance of a flashover in house fire. We've got uh, automated fire alarm, twelve cherry tree drive, Ux three fifteen. Oh, yeah, and we are on the Canton County map as well, too. Uh, let's go ahead and get this guy taken care of. We'll get him squared away and uh, disconnect. Uh, we've got to get that. This back. There we go. And let's grab our line and we'll put him back. And we should be good to go. Driver intake. Did we? Uh, no, we didn't. We're... Okay, what intake do we have? There we go. Supply line from the back. All right, we're good with that. Uh, let's go ahead and see about responding. We'll head that way. Do all the things. Uh, I think we go back to the left. I hope we do because Spur committed, right? All right, we're rolling up on the scene. And, dude, you need to get out of the way because this is the way we need to go. Uh, yeah, all right. So we got a dead, inactive fire hydrant right here. Let's kill that. Yeah, on that corner. That one's not any good. It does. Oh, yeah, we got a fully involved house fire. So I, probably no chance of a flash over in this. Yeah, everything's burning. No chance this time. Spur safe, right? Uh, let's head down towards this hydrant a little ways. There we go. All right, let's hop out. Let's get uh, everything going, our supply and all. And uh, we'll see about getting some water on this, right? i to do some hand jacking here. Yellow top, uh, hydrants on Canton County. If you don't play the game or a little different than on the heights, all the heights, uh, hydrants are good hydrants, right? Like to have plenty of water on Canton County. You may get a crappy hydrant that doesn't give you hardly any water, right? It's going to be uh, red, yellow, and blue. Uh, red being the worst, uh, yellow being middle of the road and uh, blue being really good as far as uh, the water you get and then um, black of course being out of service alright so we are on scene uh, first do's on scene let's do air pack let's go uh, let's do a halligan we'll go see what we got uh, yeah it is well involved looks like uh, top to bottom front to back right uh, we've got some arcing and stuff inside too. See it? You can kind of see it through the window there. Uh, looks like that is probably going to be the kitchen because I see a, a faucet or something there. All right. Yeah, we do have electrical box on the back here. Uh, this is going to be our gas right here. We'll go ahead and turn that off. Does Spur learn my lesson? I knew that, but it's been so long that I've been on here and messed with gas that I'd forgotten. But, uh, yeah, that's going to be the gas. And, yeah, it is fully, fully involved all the way around. I hope everyone made it out okay. Uh, yeah, all right, let's grab a hydrant real quick, and uh, we'll take care of that power, and then um, we'll see about putting some water on this maybe. Uh, get a ladder, maybe get another engine. There we go. Got us an extinguisher now. We can go ahead and see about getting that power taken care of. Here we go. Hit R to swap and uh, get this put out. We got to put, put it out first. And I want to say, if you put water on it, if you throw water on it while sparking like that, it will kill you dead as dead can be. There you go. All right, power should be taken care of. We got the gas turned off. 
Uh, I don't see any more arcing in there, so we should be good with that. Uh, you know, I wanted to say we'll bring a uh, engine up in front here and hit it with a deck gun, but uh, it's a little bit far from the street. I'm just, I'm not sure. I know at one point the deck gun didn't reach, like, it just didn't seem like it reached that far, but um, we'll just stretch some headlines. All right, let's drop this guy here. And let's see about some more equipment. I think what we're going to need is to jump over to station two. Uh, we need a ladder, right? Uh, I took the Quint out of three. I think what we're going to do is take the tanker out of uh, two. And we'll put a ladder in. Go back station two. Let's do uh, spawn truck uh, ladder. Ladder one. Let's spawn him in. Now let's go jump on him. We'll bring him over here. Sweet. We got ladder one spawned in. Let's uh, change the scheme. Let's go by hitting I to vehicle customization. Hit load custom skin. Let's alpha out the number on the side. And we should be set. Uh, lights, headlights. Siren. And uh, can we? Oh, I don't know which way to go. Hang on. Stand by. Down and to the left. Never mind. We got to go back the other way. Car's like, what in the world are they doing? I don't think these guys know what they're doing, right? All right. Let's go back this way and we should be good to go now. Just make a. Uh, no, actually, we go through that intersection, then we make a right. Hey, right, here we go. Road scene. Uh, we'll get this guy set up, even though he's pretty far from the house, too, actually. We may just uh, use him for manpower, right? <clears throat> All right, let's hop out, and let's go to tab uh, emergencies. Let's get our uh, man established. Upgrade alarm to a working alarm. We got another call for a sick person. They'll just have to uh, go personal vehicle because we're busy right now. And uh, I think we're just going to do a working alarm. We don't need a lot for this. I mean, it's it's pretty much it's going to burn down and not do anything else. So we don't have to worry about it too much. Uh, let's go back. Uh, oh, actually, let's exit out of you. Let's hit in. We'll go drone mode and get writ on scene because need writ. At least now we know Spur doesn't have to go inside on this one. It's not a concern, really. AI menu, um, let's do uh, firefighter rescue. Let's do that. Uh, let's do a saw team. No, yeah, actually, let's go ahead and do a saw team to get that garage door open. Hey, we got another call coming in. It's descending into chaos once again. All right, there we go. He's got the door open. Um... I kind of want to put something to a window. Like, there's really nowhere we can go other than this one window right here. Like, everything else is going really good. Man. Let's pop this door here. There we go. Yeah, it's fully involved. Let's see if we can get to that uh, alarm and get it cut off. Uh, yeah, the whole, the flash discussion, that's really fascinating stuff to me. It, it's, cr it's crazy complex, like how that all works. I hope one day, maybe we'll see something with like a full one-to-one -one high fidelity fire simulation. I don't know. I, you know, I don't get my hopes up too much because like I said, the complexity of it. And then you got to think about the processing power, like it would take to do that, to run all the processes and computations for like keeping track of uh, heat and oxygen and fuel and fire like all those variables uh you know I, I i think people don't really think about that a lot as far as like uh, how processes like that could tax the computer too everyone thinks about graphics right but you know uh i've known games that have had uh, a lot of physics calculations running and uh that would affect performance so um a lot to it right like it, i guess the gist of it is, is there's a whole heck of a lot to it uh, let's get to our pump. Let's go ahead and get this taken care of. Connections, uh, discharge one. This guy, let's drop him down right here for now. Let's go back. I think tank fill is left open. 
Uh, yeah, we've got 490 coming in. Let's see if we can get any more out of that. No, it's going to be as good as we get, as we get, but that's fine. Hand lines only has to be 130, so we could run multiple hand lines if we needed to. It's only one of us, though, so it's not a problem at all, really. <clears throat> all right, let's open this guy up. Uh, 147 is fine. I think it goes up to 180, right? Standard hose line, 120 to 180. Yeah, okay, so we know we're good. If you go over the 180, it will freeze you in place. You will not be able to move. Let's see. Can we get a little let? Nah, that's as good. We could do tank to pump and get, you know, be able to fine tune it a little bit more. But I'm not worried about it. We've got plenty. It's not like we're trying to squeeze every bit of water we've got into multiple lines or anything like that. So we're good with that. All right, let's start hitting it. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty cut and dry fire right here. I, I like the ones where it's only like one room. Because you do have the variable of the flash and like things just going south, right? Hit this window here. Try to knock these windows down a little bit at least. There we go. Got that one. Do a little bit of an exterior attack here. All right, there we go. Got that. Let's get these over the garage. Uh, at least the garage isn't going, so that's good. That one. Get this one, too. There we go. Uh, I had someone the other day ask, uh, Spur, would you recommend this game? Absolutely. I'd absolutely recommend it 100 times over. I really enjoy it. Uh, the performance is rock solid on my system. You know, I can't vouch for everyone's system, but it's rock solid on mine. Never run into any kind of performance issues. Um, and the game's updated a lot here lately, too. Like, he has been doing a crazy amount of updates to the game. A lot has changed just since I've started playing it, and I love that. Um... You know, I I don't uh, I don't buy into that whole thing like well, one game is better than the other. I I enjoy all of them. The ones that I play, I enjoy, right? Like they're all different. They're all their own takes on uh on firefighting simulation. Uh you know, I enjoy some more than others. Uh but I do enjoy them all. Uh, I just, I really enjoy this one here lately just for the amount of, uh, the amount of fires that we've got, the amount of calls, uh, the updates that are being done for the game, you know, tons and tons of updates and changes. Man, we've got heavy smoke in here, right? Yeah, really heavy smoke conditions. It would be it would be really cool if we did have like uh, fluid dynamics for like uh, heat and smoke, where like it, it it naturally rises. Both would rise, right? And um, so I think the alarm is going to be over here. Hopefully, uh, they both rise, right? They both fill spaces, uh, volumetric spaces, and things like that. Uh, I I think that would be super cool. Maybe one of these days we'd see that. You no, know, you can hope. I just think there's a lot to it. And then you got to think on top of that, these small devs, like, uh, they don't have huge teams. In some instances, a lot of instances, it's just one person, right? So, uh, <clears throat> they have to find, like, a balance between working on everything. The graphic side of it, the simulation side of it, the mission side of it. You know, it's just, it's, it's a balance. You know, time is money. So, um... You know, I, I don't see, like, it'd be really hard for someone to spend, like, a crazy amount of time on one aspect of the game and kind of neglect everything else, right? All right, maybe the alarm's back this way. We can kind of get it knocked down a little bit. We'll have a little bit more freedom to... There it is. I think it's right over there. Yeah, there it is. Sweet. Yeah, these types of fires are really cut and dry. You know, like, you just stay out of the red. Everything's ignited. It's done what it's going to do, right? So, uh, stay out of the red, and you'll avoid being dead. 
uh, keep your mask on. You know, you'll avoid dying that way too. But um, the ones where, like I said, where it's only one room or one little portion of the building on fire, like those are really kind of a uh, little kind of uh, tricky, right? Let's get this guy here. Get this guy down here. There we go. Uh, of course, we did not bring our Halligan. Once again, we do not have a Halligan. At least the door is open. I think, you know what? I kind of think to speed this up a little bit, let's put some fire suppression down. Like, we don't always do that. Let's get out of here. Let's... um. Kill our mask and let's get rid of uh, the saw team. Like we don't need him anymore. All right. So uh, I don't think I've ever shown this before, but if you have your team, if you like, if you have all your AI units uh, used up, you can always just go down here and remove. So we'll do vertical ventilation. It's going to be the saw team. Get rid of him. And let's try some fire suppression to kind of help us out a little bit here. Let's put this guy right here. And he is going to do his thing. So now we're back to no available units, but we should be good. We'll go inside and help out a little bit too. Uh, it would be cool. I would love for us to be able to have a little bit more control on exactly what he aims at. So let's say we want him to work over the garage there. He would do that. And so like he just kind of goes for whatever, right? Let's see. Here's our stairway. We'll go upstairs. Yeah, man, it's really raging, right? There we go, get that, get these windows. Luckily the windows are already knocked out. Like they uh they failed, right? Guess they failed from the heat. There we go. Our AI guys are knocking fires down too. Uh door is blocked. We need a hook. Figures right. We'll get that in a second. There we go, got that one. That one. All right. I uh, hope this door is failed on us here. We maybe will just go right through it. That one is locked, of course, right? You, they're always locked when you don't have a Halligan. They're either locked or blocked. It never fails. Yeah, door is blocked. Uh,. We could do a window and get to it if we wanted to that way, but I don't really know what he's spraying at. Like that doesn't make sense. All right. This is all good down here. I think it's mainly all upstairs, right? I think this goes out to the garage. Yeah, it's going to be the garage. All right, let's drop this guy here. Let's get a Halligan. Uh, that's ours, okay. I can't tell you how many times I've tried to pick up the AI Halligan. I'm like, why is it not picking up? I'm like, oh, it's theirs. You can't get theirs. It belongs to them. They don't want you taking their Halligan. All right, uh, we're actually, we're going to need a hook too for some of these doors. Too bad we just couldn't chop it down, right? Actually, let's see if we can do that. Let's see if we can just chop it down. I'm, I want to see how that works, especially for the doors that are blocked. You're right here is there's a victim in here. Really? Where's he at? I oh, his head, his head sticking through the wall there. Look at that. It looks like a cue ball, right? Uh, let's see if we can knock his door down. There we go. We got that one. Now it don't matter if it's blocked or not, right? At least we can still spray some water in there. Got that one too. There we go. This one is compromised. And we'll get this one. Sweet. Doesn't look like they're coming down completely. All right, back outside. Let's drop this guy right here. Let's grab our line and we should be good to finish this up. I hope so. I'm ready to get it done. We kind of have a long video today. Hope you guys enjoy. Like I said, Spur doesn't know anything about firefighting. I never want to give that impression. I really, I, I, I don't know Jack about it other than the game side of it. <laughs> like a little bit, a little bit.
And uh, like I said, in the, in the case of like the flashover, I don't even want to know. I really, I don't want to know what to expect on that. I just like the randomness. I, I think the randomness of it really adds a lot to it. Like I said, I've died way more in this game than I have any other firefighting game I've played. And that's dark. That is really freaking dark in here. There we go. All right. Uh, yeah, it's a victim there. Man, you know what? We're going to ignore him. We're not doing that. We're not messing with him. We're going to let him be. Uh, are we good? I think we've got it all put out between the outside guys and us. I think it's all good to go. All right. You see our AI fire suppression has disappeared, so they're done. So we know for a fact that all the fire, all the fires have been put out. There's no more fires in the house. Plop this guy down here in the doorway. We should be good to go. All right. Anytime now. There we go. 12 Cherry Tree Drive is now under control. The mannequin upstairs is safe as sound. The cue ball mannequin. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one, guys. Hope y'all enjoyed. Love all of you. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. Thank you for the 5,000 subs, and uh, we'll catch you with more Into the Flames next time. Peace!